Hello and welcome. My name is David Bradley and I am a photographer. I have been shooting pictures for I would think more than 40 years. When I was just young I remember going to camp on uh, Toronto Island and uh, to the Outdoor Education Center there and I had a regular camera and I had a little wind-up movie camera. They were both film that is why, for, not that I ever didn't take pictures, but film was expensive and expensive to develop, and so I really didn't do a whole lot until the digital era arrived. And, of course, there's things like burst mode, and most cameras now have movie mode, so if you're out and about and you have your camera and something happens, you can capture the moment. This that you see on the screen is one of those moments. I was planning on entering a competition at, uh, actually it's called the Markham Fair, which is not far from where I live, and, and they get hundreds and hundreds of entries. And they, they have many, 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 many categories, and the category I was lacking a picture for was Summer. So we were heading up towards Halliburton, and we were out on a boat, and this fellow and the boat towing him kept on sort of zinging around, but, you know, not terribly close, at a safe distance, which is why I was glad I had a long lens on, and I got in position and set up in burst mode and fired a great many shots, hoping to get much like this is, although this is propped a little bit, I wanted to have him near the front of the frame and as much of the water visible behind him. Um, I could have got more water, but I, I picked this one for the competition and I entered it and it didn't win in the summer uh, category. Because uh, this, I felt, had a good balance to it. Um, actually his feet are much farther forward than the rest of them. Also what I liked is that I would have it's funny, in a perfect world I would have wanted him to be in better lighting, but just him sort of lit on his limbs and a little bit of his uh, face, which shows an obvious expression of exertion, was pretty fine, because that darkness helps bring out the lightness and the craziness and the chaos and yet the symmetry of the water. So, um, I was pleased with this. Obviously the judges were as well. Um, as I said, I've been shooting for a very, very long time. This is the first video I have put up of any of my photography work. But it will not be the last. And for those of you out there wondering how you can, you know, get better uh, first of all, you don't need a fancy camera, you don't need a perfect lens, you don't need, a, you know, a bag full of lenses. You really, the thing that determines whether you're going to take a good picture or not, you have it, and it is your eye. And when we shoot, we had film or digital in 4x3 or 16x9 or whatever, you have a rectangle to work with. That's all you have, a rectangle. So... You must train your eye to pick a good rectangle. And <coughs> practice, practice, practice. Um, and the scariest part is then, once you have started into this, and once you are, you know, wanting to improve, it is not a bad thing to show your work to others, be it on your computer, on your phone, however, they're, you know, on Facebook or... or Instagram or whatever, and ask people for their honest opinions of what they think of your shot and how you could have done better and what they like and what they don't and, you know, in other words, just ask for their critiques. And little by little by little by little, um, from not getting upset at these people who think that the, you know, you, you think you've taken the best picture that's ever been taken and they may have differing opinions on that. Don't get upset by it. Learn from it. 
And uh, mind you, if there are things that they say that you just don't agree with, then ignore them. But if there are, you know, if there is wisdom in their critique, take it in. And, you know, when you're in the midst of a shoot, you cannot be running through a checklist like as if you're flying a plane. Little by little, these things just come into your head, and that is the training of your eye. So that as you are there in the midst of it, all the shots that you've taken, all the critiques you've had, all the looking at the pictures, all looking at other people's pictures, and everything just come together in your eye that you say, aha, this is good. So do not be afraid of critiquing people. Do not be afraid of their critiques. And above all, as best as you can, try and have a camera or a phone with you all the time, because you never know when you're walking down the street if you might encounter um, a dog, a squirrel, a turtle. We'll talk about turtles more later um, on another episode. Uh, you just never know what you will encounter, and you must be ready to capture it. Sometimes what you capture might be newsworthy. Uh, other times it just might be really cool. Like, even just like, how would I say, um, a leaf floating in a puddle. It doesn't sound like much. But that is, if you should see such a thing, and and it's a cool leaf, or, you know, the light is right, just, that is where you just have to open your mind and open your eyes and see things as other people wish they could. And, you know, sometimes less is more. It doesn't have to be, you know, an elaborate picture of an orchestra with everybody just so. Sometimes just, you know, a water skier all by himself. See, I don't have the boat in there. There's nothing in the background. It's just more water. I did that because we were on a pontoon, or I was able to do that because we were on a pontoon boat, and I was able to stand up so that the background was all water. But, you know, there's other stuff out there that, that could have been in there that may or may not have helped the shot, but I was pleased with this. So, do not be afraid to experiment. Do not be afraid to listen to others and look at other stuff and critique and be critiqued and keep shooting. That being said, I do look forward to your comments and criticisms of this picture. This is the first one I have put up in this fashion. It will not be the last. Uh, I do hope that others will let me know what they think of it. And as I put more and more pictures up, I do look forward to more and more critiques and comments, and, you know, if you have questions about photography, I am all ears. I've been doing this a long time. I've been published. I've won contests. Um, and I've done all sorts. So, uh, if you're interested in photography, and you have anything at all, feel free to ask. I am at your service. But for the moment, I will close off this episode as I gaze fondly into the viewfinder of my DSLR, which is what I'm using to film this episode. And, uh, yeah, I like this picture. And it's funny, you know, I don't know this fellow. He was just out on the lake, and uh, I think this is called wakeboarding. He, it almost looks like snowboarding. Certainly he's got sizable shoes on. And I don't know if they're attached to the board or not. But, you know, when I look at the picture, I mean, I just love the water. I love the, as I said, it, it's sort of the chaos of it, but also the symmetry of it. And his face, and the shadows, and how he's, you know, just sort of lit um, a little bit. Just enough to show that, um, as much as he is enjoying himself, uh, I would think that he is under some level of stress and strain. So, until we meet again, and I hope we do meet again, I will leave it at that. So it's David Bradley signing off. 
I look forward to, well, most anything you have to say. Bye for now.